Help me continue to create ad-free spiritual content by supporting me on Patreon. Depending on the tiers selected, you can receive one free lesson a month or access to a live Zoom meetup where members receive intuitive readings, attunements, and more. Every dollar really does help. Now, on to the video. I struggle with anxiety and fear of loneliness. Is there a d deeper meaning attached with this? How do we deal with this in this life? Mm. Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to, if I can, start please, with yeah. the anxiety component. Um, Spirit, would you please bring Injani to my mind's eye? I asked Spirit to do this, and Spirit represents you kind of like a holographic image, kind of like Princess Leia in Star Wars. And I'm going to ask Spirit now to show me in the energy where the anxiety is and what the nature of it is. Okay. And so what Spirit is showing me right off the bat, this is not as a result of some uh, psychological dysfunction. It has its roots there. I mean, there's, there's, of course, some roots there. But at this point, the anxiety is more about the misfiring of energy and the collection of energy in different points within the body and within the chakra and the auric. And so what needs to happen here is a clearing of the channels, a clearing of uh, the chakras, a clearing of the grid, uh, bringing light into it. Because when there's obstacles and blockages in these different pathways, the energy collects there and it starts to vibrate there and we experience it physically as this sort of quickening in a fearful way but once the blockage is removed once the channel is made clear then the energy just flows freely sometimes we'll enter into sort of a panicky state but we can just return again to that free-flowing energetic state so it's more about the field is what I'm saying and it's therefore easier for you to correct. And one technique I will give to you and to, for everybody else is the pulse technique. The pulse technique requires you to get into a meditative state and to begin breathing in a rhythmic way with a rhythmic cadence. And as you breathe in, what you're doing is you're filling your body and also your grid, okay, your energy. We exist in like a spherical grid. This grid consists of highways, byways, pathways that run into us and also express out of us. And so as we're breathing in in this rhythmic way, we're taking in light. And first the light begins to fill up our physical body. We continue to breathe and the light begins to fill up the auric. We continue to breathe in this light. It begins to fill up the sphere in entirety. We can feel this buildup of light within our total essence. And when we're there, when we're at capacity with the light, you can feel the vibration of it. What you want to do at that point is begin to pulse. Pulse. And I like to do that on a breath, an exhalation. <sighs> pulse. And what you're doing is you're pulsing that light out and through you. All of these channels within you, and again within your sphere, and external to you, into your space. Pulse. Pulse. And as you do, those blockages are jostled, and ultimately, they flow away. This is a maintenance technique, this, a management technique, meaning this is not something you just do once because there's a familiar nature to the anxiety. And also, we've got triggering things in the uh, experience. I'm sorry, Tricia, here I go. We also have triggering things in the space itself that keep you in the anxiety itself. These we would call thought forms. Thought forms are just little mechanics, little spiritual mechanics that keep you in this space of loneliness, which is just fear of being alone or being with yourself. There's a fear component to loneliness and also in this space of anxiety. So for you, this is a management thing. We need you to do this pulse technique at least once a day. Try to do it morning and try to do it at night. Pulse at least, at least 10 times. Again, fill yourself up so that you're really brimming with this high vibration light energy and then pulse. Also what you need to do, also what you need to do is clear your actual space. You can do this with Sage, you can do this with Palo Santo. The best way to do this is to get high vibration. The best way to do this for me is to turn on some high vibration music and start moving around. I say the Lord's Prayer and I just start 
commanding the space to adjust in accordance to how I wish it to be because I am sovereign in that space. And so it is. It happens very instantly. But you need to start taking control of your physical space. And in so far as we have clutter in the house or spaces in the house that are not congruent to the free flowing of energy as above, so below. So the space itself must represent what we want to create in the energy itself. If we want the flowing energy, if we want the channels to be clear, the space has to be reflective of that as well. Also, knowledge, study, filling the mind with the sweet, sweet knowledge and truth of spirit Truly turning down the dials on the white noise, on the people, on the gossips, on all the needless distraction of life and focusing intensely on aligning with the truth of who you are through teachers, mentors, books, classes, audiobooks, podcasts, just filling yourself up with this high vibrational knowledge will help you to anchor more securely in your space. That will help with the anxiety. Now, loneliness... I don't think we have time for loneliness. Oh, maybe a little bit. We have yes. seven minutes. Loneliness is just the fear of being alone. Now, <clears throat> I'm just hooking into this, and there's just a deep sadness that is associated with this. This is also associated with unworthiness, and we've we've turned this into a script, haven't we? We've turned this we've turned this into a script where the loneliness tells us something about ourselves. We're lonely because mm -hmm. we are unworthy. We don't have people. We don't have lovers. We don't have this because there's something wrong with us. And on an unconscious or subconscious level, we agree with that. And if we agree with that on a subconscious level, well, then we create that because everything that's created in the materiality comes first through the subconscious. So you have agreed subconsciously that there is something wrong, and therefore you are alone. First of all, there's nothing wrong with being alone. First of all, I, I wish I could be more alone sometimes. But I know that that's my experience and not yours. What we need to do is to get into the, identify, the identification of who it is that you are. God created us in God's image. And because we're created in God's image, we're created to do what God created us to do, which is to create. We create through thinking and having an intention, feeling that, believing that and vibrating to that intention, and then transmitting that to the subconscious. The subconscious is the womb of your personal creation. There's a disconnect here. There's a misidentification of who it is that you are. You too, like so many others, don't understand how powerful you are. You are a God. You are a God of your life. Emmanuel, God in us. You can create the reality that you want to create. You can have all the people that you want to have. You can have all the money that you want to have. You can have all the freedom that you want to have. But you have to believe it's possible. And further, you have to feel that it's possible. You have to know it in your bones. And this is where we have to get you. Because when you know it in your bones, and when you walk around being what you believe, that's when the subconscious, the womb, receives the seed mm. and creates it in the reality. So we need you to understand who you are. Hmm. We need you to understand who you are. This is a longer conversation. I'm sorry that I can't talk to you longer about this, but this is where we begin, is understanding who it is that we are. I recommend Neville Goddard um, for this and understanding how the subconscious works and also the conscious and the feeling. I recommend Joseph Murphy as well. Some of his work is very helpful. But I really want you to just encounter yourself, encounter yourself, meditation and really just the quietness let spirit draw closer to you the sweetness of spirit and it's so so sweet spend time in that space you're not alone don't you see mm. you're not alone you've always been attended you just like elijah looking up at the mountain and seeing all of the angels they were with him all along you are fully attended we want this to materialize in the form of people. No problem. You can create this once you believe in yourself. I believe in you. Do you believe it? Say, I believe it. And I believe so it. it is. I believe it. And so it is. And so, and it, so is. it is. Thank you. But, well, I just, as I tapped in before you were channeling all of that, I got uh, a guide came through. It's her great aunt on her mother's side, and it, they believe she's an aunt by marriage, and she said, that she encouraged her to step into who she truly is, which is what your channel brought through. She also said that she's been looping 
and that's what you were talking about, uh, the looping, and that, and actually recommended breath work, and I got breath of fire, which I think is similar to the pulsing that you're yes. talking about, just a yes. bit more, and maybe look up other breathing. ways of breath. Yes, so that's, I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't, I was like, I wanted to go like, ah, that's what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes, it's coming out. Yeah. Join Trisha Carr and I for the 2019 Intuitive Intensive starting the week of March 18th, 2019. This 12-week program is designed to activate and blast open your psychic abilities so that you can intuitively read yourself and others. Spaces are limited, so check it out at the link below and register today.